Okay, whenever you see a question one, whether in tests or in a practice or anywhere, first thing you do is after reading, find the magic sentence that tell you what the experiment is about. So magic sentence, if you didn't underline this, is usually after the equation and it will say, test the relationship between two things. This one, you should underline it every time you do a question one because it will tell you what are your variables, dependent and independent. Straight away, they show you already. I not F. Oh, okay. So whole experiment will be on I not and F. Lah. Okay, so we are using a coil circuit. Hey, here are some keywords. Got circuit, got coil, letter, must draw. And that's pretty much it. Huh? Miss, they didn't give diagram. Oh. Yeah, there are some experiments that don't give diagram. You have to think of your own. So you're investigating how peak current change with frequency. Oh, frequency, you see this, you should think of, oh, oh got CRO, got signal generator, or oh, oh, AC supply. Hmm, okay. Coil, hmm, can draw solenoid or something like that. I think that's it, resistance of the coil. Okay, so how to draw? Uh? You need power supply, you need coil. You're going to send current through a coil. So that means we need at least, let's draw a coil. We need at least a coil. So you draw a coil. Oh. Then you need to connect this to your AC or signal generator. So you can choose like, if you want signal generator, you draw, draw a box and you signal generator. If you are the AC kind of person, then okay, you put AC. Oh. AC. But in this case, you want to vary frequency, right? So it's easier to use signal generator because it's easier for signal generator to change. Okay, this is AC. Yeah. So AC is alternating, but depending on the AC model, you may not be able to change the frequency. So best to put a signal generator label. Okay. That's all? Oh, CRO. Oh, okay. CRO, uh, you must connect in parallel. So that means like here, parallel to your AC, it's going to be CRO. It's connected in such a way so that current cannot flow through the CRO and it has another path to flow to, like this. CRO is like voltmeter, resistance very high, current cannot flow through. One. Okay, so that's your CRO. Lah. I think that's the basic that we need, right? We got our signal generator, we got this thing. Mm, I think it looks good as a good basic start. Okay. So your signal generator here is going to control uh, your frequency, which can also be read by the CRO and the peak current. Okay. Ooh, we need to measure current. Miss how to measure current. We need to measure peak current. There are a few methods you can do this. One is to just put an emitter right here. This is an AC emitter or DC also can. Emitter can also measure current uh, you can measure depending on what type of emitter you can measure rms current or peak current so just throw an emitter there can already okay so that'll be measuring your i naught okay what else are we missing so how does this experiment work if you tried it out uh you would have written out some kind of thing if you haven't tried out yet never mind this is your starter to help think about this type of experiment this one what are you changing f on the signal generator what will change in response? I not. So you use your emitter somehow to measure I not. But actually, why does that happen? Ah? Means how come you change frequency, I will become different? Why? Think about it for a moment. This is a coil solenoid. Why, when you change frequency, it will affect I not? Hmm, think a moment and see. So, uh, if you check the mark scheme, you will notice one point that says, use lower frequency to produce larger current. And the question I have for you guys is, how does frequency affect current? Got such thing, man, means we never learned before. Are you sure about that? Wait, 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 wait. How does the frequency of AC affect current in the coil? It does affect. There's actually one pass here. Shavani, that day you asked me that one. 
the RMS in Kwai Wan. But there is a pass. I don't know where it is going. Ash Avenue, what question is that? Um, but here, if you look carefully, when you control the frequency here and you send current to a coil, you are creating a magnetic field there. Eh? And this uh, flux or field is changing because of the AC. So there are three, there are three graphs that you, can, that you will see here. Number one, you could look at the uh, voltage graph, Vt. And your voltage is changing. Okay, so with power supply, we want to pump in. Okay, so like that. Soup, 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 soup. And because of this voltage, you will have a certain current in the circuit, which can be measured by the emitter or CRO in parallel. Current time. And this current through the coil. But then current through the coil might be a little smaller and will change. This one depends on a few things, but it could depend on the uh, frequency. So I'm going to say V and F. This magnetic field is changing. Do you see something that the solenoid does not like? Changing magnetic field. Oh no! So this solenoid creates the field that is changing, but it does not like the change through the field. So that is where there will be some kind of problem, because the change in flux, d phi dt, how fast, how quickly is it changing, depends on the frequency. And that is what this whole experiment is really about. Resonance of the coil. See, I put the word there, resonance means what is resonance? So the coil itself will have some kind of resonance, depending on what current frequency, uh, what frequency you give it. So, a uh, possible explanation is that I'm going to write this out because sometimes it help, it's helpful too. If you have a certain AC going into a coil, uh, you can say that the AC current or the AC supply causes a change in flux. Through who I must say? Through the solenoid coil. Who doesn't like changing flux? Oh no, <laughs> this fella. So there will be Faraday's law. You talk about Faraday's law. There will be an induced EMF from coil in coil. But I must mention Lenz's law. So you say to oppose the AC supply. So you look at this power supply or up down up down there's going to be an induced emf that try to oppose it so maybe it looks something like this lah i just try to draw maybe like this this is going to be the induced emf and the first one is going to be the supply emf supply voltage Induced because it does not like the change, so it opposes. It fight, law. You fight battery, fight battery. So when a battery fight, fight, fight battery, or if these two perfectly cancel each other out like this, oh, wrong color. You perfectly cancel out, then there's no current in really, it. If it's so big, cancel out. The same idea applies if you are looking at batteries in the circuit. If there's one battery here, another battery here, and they are pointing to each other. If one say nine volt induced EMF, the other one also nine volt, no current, because the batteries fight each other. The idea is that they oppose. If they are exactly the same, so depending on how big your induced EMF, your current may be smaller or bigger, lor. So I'm going to add that one sentence as an explanation as well. So, since the change in flux depends on frequency e, ah. so when there's a larger frequency larger frequency or larger change in flux or larger emf will cause smaller current or smaller rms current also can Okay, so you see the connection, ah? Frequency affects the let's 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 do this one. Frequency affects the change in flux. 
Change in flux affects the EMF, the back EMF that opposes the power supply. So a very big frequency, very big EMF opposes now, then you got smaller current. But we don't want small current, we want big current. Okay, so in this experiment, when you select a range of current, okay, because you need to plot a graph of I against F, right? Select a uh, smaller frequency. And that is what the detail, detail mark is talking about. Use lower frequency for larger current. So last one, I plot graph. Okay, here now graph. If I do this, mew, 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 mew. this one is your current for large, so small frequency. Then you're going to alternate. Let's say there is another one. What color to use? Pink color. Pew, 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 pew. This one much smaller. Leh. This one could be your current at a high frequency. Because now the induced EMS is fighting the battery a lot more already at higher frequency. So they fight, oh? and you can measure the change. I. Last thing, this change in amplitude. Oh. Actually, you can plot graph one. The idea is similar to your resonance curve that you learned in chapter 13. So the amplitude, in other words, the peak current, Peak current is what I've mentioned. No? Peak current for certain frequency. Peak current for another frequency. This one, you can kind of follow that graph one. Something like this. The resonance curve. But don't worry, they won't ask you this for electric circuits. La. <laughs> so at a certain frequency, this is frequency, you will have the largest. La. The coil will like it a lot. That's just all. La. This is an extra, extra thing on the left to show you. The one on the right, you will see on the CRO, the wave very big and wave very small. Eh, miss, I thought you say CRO cannot measure current. It can, but you must connect in a special way. Okay, last thing, last thing about the experiment before I call it a day for this experiment is that your emitter, oh, say, miss, can I use current to measure uh, current? Can I use CRO to measure current? Ah? Can you have to use another method to do that? So let me scoot this down here. Okay, if you want to use something else to measure current instead of an emitter, this is what you can do. So you have the side of the circuit, you put a resistor, let's say one, one kilo ohm, okay, and connect. Then you want to measure current, right? Current is flowing. So what you can do is you measure either using a voltmeter across the resistor. Ah, then you got VIR, you can calculate V equals to I times R. You can find the R. Or if you want to actually see the current graph like this one, instead of a voltmeter, you put a CRO or CRO in parallel with a resistor so that you can measure the current flowing through the resistor. This is another method that you will see a lot in practical. In this experiment also they mention. So can I, you don't use emitter, you use this method. Lor. Either use emitter to measure current, or you use volt, voltmeter over a resistor, PD across resistor. And you know V, you know R, you can find I. What questions do you guys have about this experiment? I won't talk about the whole thing. I'll leave it to you guys to finish up. This, this physics behind it, uh, it's okay if you don't know one. It helps, uh, but since we are revising for chapter 23 also, induction, might as well talk about it too. Yeah, zoom out so you can see the whole thing. Okay, now. Nah. What questions do you have about this one? Okay, so the idea is, you have a signal generator, AC, with a certain frequency that you choose, right? This AC, uh, causes a magnetic field. AC current. Uh. Uh, yeah, how to write current AC? <coughs> For clarification, let's not write current. Let's just write uh, AC voltage. Okay, okay, we do, we do. You have a certain AC at a certain voltage at a certain frequency that you choose. That will affect the magnetic field or magnetic flux that is created in the solenoid. And this one is changing because our AC, the field suddenly point to the right, suddenly point to the left. 
This changing flux will cause an induced EMF because EMF is proportional to d phi dt. Induced. Now this induced EMF is going to oppose the change that caused it, and that is the power supply. So it oppose uh, AC voltage of supply. Then you can say, oh, it's like this diagram here. When there's two EMF fighting each other, the resultant who is stronger will win. Lah. But if there's if they're equal equal EMF, no current. But if you have e if you have slightly different EMF like this, maybe one is two volt <coughs> and one is nine volt. Who win? Nine volt battery wins. So nine volt battery can push the current here. And if you want to use your VIR equation, VIR, you are going to use nine minus two. That's your it's like net. Kirchhoff's law. Nine minus two. What's the current? If you know the resistance, one kilo ohm. You can calculate the current. Okay, so you see, uh, if they're equal but opposing each other, there's no current. But if one of the EMF is smaller than the other, then there's current. Uh. So this is what's, this is what's going to happen, uh, this one, in our circuit. There's some opposing EMF fighting the main supply EMF. That is the idea of oppose. So then the current, uh, let's talk about, let's do this net EMF, sum of EMF, ah, Kirchhoff saw the sum of EMF around the loop. So this is your loop right here. So the sum of EMF depends on a few things, I, R. So current affected by um, induced EMF which is opposing the battery. This is storyline, huh? AC voltage or frequency. So how does the frequency affect current? You follow the chain. Frequency, blah, 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 affects current. You can write here, sum of EMF is basically, in this case, supply minus induce. This one, I've come my exam, probably five mark question. I, or four mark, I don't know. Three or four, no, not five, three or four mark. If they ever ask it in paper four. Haven't asked it so far, I haven't seen it. DC got la. Hey, la. So frequency affects how quickly your field is changing. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. That is a solenoid field. That will cause an induced EMF to oppose a change. And this opposed change fights the battery. When you fight the battery, your current is smaller. Though. So if you fight the battery a lot, you almost have no current. So if you crank this uh, frequency super, super high already, or then there's not going to be any current at all, I guess. Oh no, there'll be some kind of a peak. Lah. At certain frequency, you have maximum current, and then you go down, it's like very small. So go play this. If you ever get a chance to play in real life, it's quite an interesting one to look at. Okay, so that's all for this paper 5 <coughs> setup. If you haven't tried it, go try it out. Finish it up uh, for this week, I guess, today, tonight.